Do we truly love the Lord? Do we truly live in his heart? This message is certainly a test to those of us who claim to live in his heart. Lord, please give us the grace to embrace your heart for these. Amen. As I began my communion service and got to the gospel reading from the Sunday Missal, I began to feel the Lord's heart. It took me aback. The first two readings were about the Lord exposing our enemies, the Red Sea opening and swallowing up our enemies, and the crushing of the wicked, the annihilation of the wicked. But the gospel reading was the woman caught in adultery. At dawn, he appeared again in the temple courts where all the people were gathered around him, and he sat down to teach them. The teachers of the law and the Pharisees brought in a woman caught at adultery. They made her stand before the group and said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. In the law of Moses, it is commanded for us to stone such women. Now what do you say? They were using this question as a trap in order to have a basis for accusing him. But Jesus bent down and started to write on the ground with his finger. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, Let any one of you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. At this, those who heard him began to go away one at a time, the older ones first, until only Jesus was left with the woman still standing there. Jesus straightened up and asked her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She answered, No one, sir. He replied, Then neither do I condemn you. Jesus declared, Go now and leave your life of sin. That's John 8, 1 through 11. And this scripture caught my eye and I wanted to share it with you. I've just been feeling it beating in my heart. It's from Ezekiel 33. Say to them, As surely as I live, declares the Lord God, I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but rather that the wicked should turn from their ways and live. Turn, turn from your evil ways, for why should you die, O house of Israel? Then Jesus began to speak, Because you are my bride, I do not want you to see evildoers as the world sees them. Instead, I want you to see how they came from the Father and were given into the hands of men void of reasoning, men who see only their own way as the best way. Do you know these are trained before infancy, in the womb, and even before, in preparation for their missions by their highly organized societies? It is no mistake that Obama takes his place in history. It is not by chance. Rather, much is planned beforehand in preparation for the Incarnation, those being chosen by demon entities to fulfill a role in history. Many of these roles are cast before the woman conceives and set into motion afterwards. Not only that, but many are chosen, yet in the process of time, one emerges as the most qualified. Then the fullness of the plan swings into operation, as is the case with Obama, whose father, Malcolm X, was black and charismatic, one of the main qualifications. And so you, my bride, must not look at the sin but the sinner in a state that he was in before being groomed to fulfill his role. You must look at Hillary in the very same way. They began as pure creations from my father's heart. Then the evil conceived was trained into them. Responding to this training, iniquity was conceived and brought through the years to its completion. Infused with greed, pride, and ambition, taught that they alone had wisdom, and the masses were incapable of rising to that level of intelligence. It was easy for them to reason that the ends justify the means. From that stronghold of lies, iniquity flowed like a river, 
Affirmation accompanied them at every level of their development to see to it that they were cast in the concrete of pride and self-opinion. Only those with extraordinary integrity of soul escaped the vice grips of this preparation to rule the world to the liking of a handful of people who they themselves were likewise brought into the world. So what am I saying? I look at the bedrock of the soul, the soul before corruption into corrupt parents and rulers. I look at what they could have been if disciplined early in life to be like me. I look at the misfortunes and turning points in their lives where they sincerely called into question the rightness of the plan laid before them. I look at how they struggled in different crossroads of their lives and I at least give them credit for the struggle, even if they did fail out of weakness, pursue the right path, and abandon the evil path. Let me put it to you this way. Many of them do not know what they are doing is evil. They have been taught that the means justifies the end results, and that it is good to reason this way, not evil. When they see the innocent dying because of their plan, such as tsunamis, volcanoes, and other events that are manipulated with Tesla technology, they see it as a collateral damage necessary to bring peace to the world. They see peace as unattainable by man's agency unless it is totally engineered by them. And so they must come to the conclusion that there will be death for the ignorant masses as a result of their actions. And they see it also as good that the earth be cleared of huge sectors of humanity, which they are ignorant of understanding the plan of life that I had for them. It takes a massive act of conversion to reveal to them how they have been programmed and deceived. Like all youngsters, they worked hard for their reward and were not taught to question, but to execute commands from above and do it more efficiently than their peers. And now, after the Lord said that, I just had a vision of Hillary. She was bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, young, like in her 20s. And uh, she was just coming out of a test with a joyful, hopeful expression, tinged with just a little bit of apprehension. She was so eager to please, so eager to score high. She said, did I make it? Did I make the grade? And what was she asking about? A real-time test where the ethic of the ends justify the means, and many later died as a result of her decision. You see, this is the way they are groomed, Claire. And so you could say they don't know their right hand from their left, just the way the Ninevite culture brought up their children, of whom the Lord said, And should I not pity Nineveh, that great city in which there are more than 120,000 persons who do not know their right hand from their left? That's Jonah 4.11. I just want to make a remark here. Some people say that that was uh, 120,000 were children. But what the Lord is saying is that the Ninevite culture was so corrupt. I mean, they were hideous. They were horribly, horribly violent, torturing people, had no conscience at all. They were the worst. They were really, really, really bad. But they were brought up to believe that the ends justify the means. So it was okay to be like that because that's how you had to be to win. That's how you had to be to survive and to keep your country alive. And uh, he's again citing this for that very reason. They don't know right from wrong. By the way, that's uh, Jonah 4.11. So the Lord continues, How does a just and merciful God handle such ignorance? They cannot be left to run free and continue working for Satan. They must be contained. And in that process, brought to the realization of their sin. This is what I'm asking of you, heart dwellers. If you truly dwell in my heart, you know my heart for these sinners is mercy, reform, repentance. I do not wish for them to die in sin. I wish for them to repent and receive me as their Lord, and I will do the rest. So I'm asking of you, my chosen ones, pray for them. 
pray for conviction, pray for conversion, pray that my Father would draw them to me, pray for utter brokenness and destitution, the kind of brokenness that cracks the foundations of sin their life was built upon from a small child onward. Pray for that. Pray for that, and you will indeed please me. According to Hal Turner, President Putin has given President Trump all necessary intelligence to convict Hillary and a host of others. This is what many have been waiting for, to expose the treason. Now that President Trump has this information, he can proceed with indictments. But the Lord's heart is not to punish this woman, but to stop her from doing any more damage, and that she would repent and her soul would be saved from hell. This is his heart for everyone involved in the destruction of our nation. We cannot afford to hold bitterness in our hearts against anyone. If you love Jesus, and if your love for Jesus is not strong enough to cause you to pray for them, consider that unforgiveness is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. Not only that, but it opens the door for the demons to sift you. Judgment, guys. Judgment is a huge open door. We can look at the facts of what people have done and say that was wrong, but we cannot judge their motives. Dear ones, I am not saying this to condemn anyone. These are struggles I'm having too. I'm saying it for your own good. Jesus has dealt strongly with me about forgiving these people. He does not want rancor or bitterness to be in his vessels unto honor. He doesn't want rancor or bitterness spread by the Christian community. We have to be above that. If you are a Christian, you know you have fallen short and sinned. And if your sins cannot be forgiven, if you do not forgive others, what are we waiting for? We have to forgive them. So please, hold no bitterness towards these souls. Rather, pray to the Father that he will draw them to his Son, Jesus, and they will accept his love and give him their lives. Living in a hot concrete cell with iron bars gives a person much time to consider their end and what they've done with their lives. This has to be a time of extreme brokenness. So let us pray for all concern that they will turn to the Lord and surrender their lives to Him totally repentant of the harm they have done.